Good evening and welcome back to Let's Play the Shiva. When we left off last time, we met our main character here. He's having kind of a crisis of faith. Synagogue is having a tough time. It's, he's facing foreclosure. And then all of a sudden we learn from the police that a Jack Lauder has suddenly died. Jack Lauder is someone we clearly have a history with, although Rabbi's not been very forthcoming about it. And uh, has left us $10,000, which is going to turn everything around. Although it casts suspicious suspicion on us as well, according to our police officer, Sam Durkin. So excited to see him. Um, now, we want to figure out, obviously, what's going on with Jack and why he left us this money, because we weren't expecting it. And we are going to go check things out under the pretense of a shiva, the period of mourning following someone's death. So, let's see what we can learn. Mrs. Lauder? Yes? I heard about your husband. I came to pay my respects. Oh, you knew Jack? Uh, eight years ago. That will be... Do I want to be honest? I should be honest. We'll be honest. I kind of want to do the rabbinical response just to see what he says. So far it's been turning everything into be into a question, so well, we gotta see what he says. How's he gonna make a question out of this? Does one need to know a man in order to grieve him? Aha! Uh -huh. That's, uh, I suppose not. <laughs> All right, come on in. I'm sorry, you look so familiar, but I can't place your face. What is your name? If I wanted answers, she'd have to know who I was. Yeah, and I don't really want to lie to her. This required tact. Honest. My name is Rabbi Russell Stone. Your husband used to be a member of my congregation. Some time ago. Oh, I remember now. Uh oh. You have a lot of nerve coming here. What, what do you mean? Um. Well, we'll try and. I mean, he left me money and I don't know why, so that's what I'm trying to figure out. I'm not trying to. Try not trying to upset you in your time of mourning. Uh, we'll be apologetic. Well, I'm sorry about that. Oh, you're sorry, are you? I'm so glad to hear that. Jack would love to hear that you are sorry. He knows already, Mrs. Lauder. Too late, Rabbi. Too late. What do you want? Um, well... I just want to talk about Jack. Talk? Just came by for a friendly chat? Is that it? I... Oh, stop it. Just stop it. I don't believe this. You threw us out of your <gasps> temple eight years ago. Why'd we throw him and out? And now you drop by for a visit? It wasn't like that. Well, what was it then? Yeah. Can you tell me that? Come on, Maybe Rabbi. this was a bad idea. Maybe you're right. And yet, you're here. Why? Well... Maybe I should... Hmm... I feel almost like I should do the rabbinical re approach because I am a rabbi here, but and that matters. So as that's the character anyway. So, um, but I feel like I personally would want to just just put it out there. Like, look, we weren't on good terms, but he locked me all this money. I'm trying to figure out why. Just be honest. The police visited me today. Did they? Yes. What did they say? That I'm suspect number one. Really? Well, that would make sense. Who else has a motive except for the rabbi who hates us? Uh, okay, accepting. I'll let that slide. Whatever. Jack hated you. That's enough. Well, why did he leave Mrs. me money? Mrs. Lauder, if he hated me so much, why did he leave me $10,000 in his will? That's impossible. She didn't know? I said the same thing. Oh, she didn't know. Jack wouldn't do that. It's a crazy the world. The police said he did. How do you know for sure? The police told me. I have no love of the police, but I doubt they'd lie about that. Mrs. Lauder, if Jack hated me so much, why did he give me so much money? I... I don't know. This makes no sense. None of it does. Sorry. Who would kill Jack? He was a good man. Yes, he was. Don't you stop. <laughs> you have no idea. The police have no other leads? Aside from you? No. How did he die? I don't see how that's any of your business. No, uh, I'm the suspect, so, uh, you well, know. I suppose I'm curious, and I'd like to 
help. Help? Why would you want to help? Because he gave me ten thousand dollars, and I feel weird about it. Uh, amends. I think she's gonna be mad about that, but. Maybe I'm looking to make amends for what happened eight years ago. What exactly happened? <laughs> Why not? Why shouldn't a rabbi play at being detective? You want to investigate Rabbi Stone? Yes. Be my guest. I'll have to ask you some questions about what happened. Can't you just ask the police? No, I'm their suspect. They won't talk to me. I'm a suspect. Fine. Fine. Ask whatever you want. Ah, oh, achievement. Heflick, remain polite and civil. Hmm. Although, I do have a suspicion, like, what turned the, the police on to the idea of me in the first place? Hmm, did they possibly talk to the deceased spouse and ask her, do you know anyone who would have any reason to want Jack dead? And she said, I know the rabbi who kicked us out eight years ago. Seems likely. So, yeah, okay, let's... Oh, is this... The mirror's covered, so that must be... So Rabbi probably knows why it's covered, because I'm assuming it's a mourning thing, um, something Jewish, but I personally don't know what it is, and I would like to learn. So I'm going to ask, and I hope she doesn't get mad like, it's, you're a rabbi, you should know. You've covered up the mirror. Yes, it's what you are supposed to do, right? Well, yes, but... I know, I'm not Jewish. I'm probably doing it all wrong, but it feels right. Is it right, Rabbi? Uh, yes. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. So, let's find out about this murder. How did Jack die? He was shot right in the head oh. at close range, according to the police. I, I'm sorry, Mrs. Lauder. He was in the showroom, working late. That's all I know. Okay. So, the showroom of what? What business was your husband in? We were in business together. Fashion design, high-end casual wear, shirts, blouses, slacks. Hmm. I'd design and he'd sell. All right, so how was it doing? Was the business successful? We did all right. It was tough at first, but things have been picking up over the last few years. We sell to mainly boutique stores, but Macy's has bought several pieces from us, and Saks was interested. Hmm. Um, how's things gonna go now? And what happens to the business now? Are you going to run it by yourself? I guess I could, but not right away. And definitely not in that same showroom. Well, yeah. I can understand that. Um, we probably should take a look at the business, yeah? Where was it? Where is your showroom? Why? Do you want to have a look? Yes. It can't hurt. Oh, this is crazy. Do you really want to do this? I, I, yes. I really do, actually. Sure, if you want to have a look, go ahead. Just because trained police officers couldn't find anything doesn't mean a rabbi can't. The building is 1407 Broadway, room 903. Thank you. Okay, and um, how are you doing? How are you holding up, Mrs. Lauder? Fine. As well as can be expected. Alright, uh, what's your company called? What is the name of your business? Charming Fashion Company. Charming? Yeah, it's a strange name, but it has meaning behind it. Okay, do it's tell. It's based on my family's name, Sharma. And it sounds like charming. It does. I get it. Real cute. Wait, family name of Sharma. Is she related to Nishanti? Okay, so... Well, all we've got is charming and... Well, tell us anything else about Can it. Can you tell me about your company again? Sure. What do you want to know? Um... No thanks. I'm going to leave now. I'll see what else I can discover. Thanks. I guess. Rabbi Stone? Yes? About eight years ago, could you just tell me why? Were you and Jack happy? Yes. I yes, we were. Then my reasons don't matter. Oh, come on! Don't be so evasive! I want to know what happened eight years ago. It's gonna drag it out and give us the story bit by bit, isn't it? Ugh. Which I do appreciate slow reveals, but it's also driving me a little nuts because I want to know. Alright, over to charming fashion. So, this design board was the only spark of creativity left in this deserted showroom. I didn't know much about fashion design, but it looked like a skirt, or maybe a large shirt. 
Well, depending on what type of fashion she's doing, it can be hard to tell the difference if she's some of the more bizarre stuff. Designs for some sort of skimpy sundress with some orders attached. It was a poster of some blank-faced woman in a hat. Well, I think the point is not so much the hat as it is the dress. That's a nice dress. Paints, markers, and random junk adorned the shelf. Computer is going to be important, I think. Let's look at this photo, though. What do we got here? It was a photo of Mrs. Lauder with a post-it note reading, Don't forget anniversary flowers. A dressmaker's dummy. And we've got a rack over here. The clothing rack was empty. I suppose Mrs. Lauder took everything away. The office computer remained on the desk. I assumed that Mrs. Lauder didn't want to be bothered with it. Let's see what it's got. Oh, a password. Well, it's going to be their anniversary, isn't it? All right, we're going to leave the photo where it was, but don't forget anniversary flowers. What's the date, though? All right, anything here? Nope. I made a snap decision not to start collecting old-fashioned posters. He's not going to want to pick up anything, but we're going to try anyhow. Couldn't think of a reason to take it with me. They weren't relevant to my problem. Wasn't that desperate for a larger congregation. <laughs> a hanger? I had no need for a clothing hanger. All right. Okay, well, we're getting a whole lot of nothing here. We gotta figure out this password. Okay, let's ask her about the anniversary. I have a feeling that's that's gonna be what it is. Perhaps. Or we can just maybe ask her for the password. Mrs. Lauder. Oh, it's you. Come on in. Or we can't just ask her about it. Okay. What business? We would in fashion to high end. I desire. Okay. I'm going to leave. I'll see what else. Thanks. All right. All right. Sharma. All right, there we go. Welcome back, Jack Lauder. Please choose an option below. Uh, let's check our mail first. Ooh, and we've got all sorts. From Ethan G, Business Matters. Jack, that must be an oversight. I'll look into it. From Rajshree Lauder, Patterns and Producers. Hello, partner. I got those shirt designs done. I'll send copies out to the factory to get fit samples made. And guess what? I got them. I spent an hour on the phone with Telecharge, but I got the tickets. Orchestra seats, too. Hmm. I'll meet you at the office at 6. No excuses this time. Love, Raj. Tomo! For your network and protection needs, contact Tomo! Alright, from Ethan. Hmm. This is strange. The rates do seem unusually high. I'll look into it. Alright, from Kenny. Shipping. Mr. Lauder, how are you? Your goods are packed and ready to ship. Wire us the funds and we'll get it on the next boat. From Kenny. Alright, from Ethan. You're right. Your instinct was right. Something isn't right with this deal. All the wire transfers lead to different places and nobody answers the phone at any of them. My accountant sense is tingling. Don't panic, Jack. I'll get to the bottom of this. See you at Temple tonight. Hmm, some kind of bad deal going on. Alright, from Rajshree. Hello, hello. The fit model cancelled again? Can she be any more useless? Okay, we'll just have to find someone else. Don't forget we're having dinner at the Goldwaters tonight. Love, Raj. Trouble. Call me now. We need to talk. Hmm. Well, this is intriguing. Meeting from Ethan. Okay, I got you into this mess. I will get you out of it. I'm meeting with JDM tonight. Do not write him any more checks until you hear from me. If he wants to play hardball, he picked the wrong guys to mess with. Hmm. JDM, huh? And a rotten deal? Interesting. This was worth looking into, indeed. 
All right, and from Kenny, money transfer. Mr. Lauder, how are you? We're still awaiting payment transfer from you. Your goods are taking up space in our warehouse. Please submit the monies ASAP or we will be forced to liquidate them. Hmm, so Kenny's probably part of the shady business. From Ravna Admin, undeliverable. To Jack Lauder from Ravna Admin. The following message was undeliverable. The reported error was, subscriber RSTNOE does not exist on Ravna. RSTNOE. Message is as follows. Hello, Rabbi Stone. It's been a while. I hope I got the correct email address. No doubt you're surprised to hear from me. I'm not sure why I'm writing either. I often think about what you said. It still angers me, but I can understand your motives. You looked at us and said, Nothing is worse than when Jesus turns their back. Jews. Jesus. Jews. Totally misread that. Nothing is worse than when Jews turn their backs on one another. I can still remember that look in your eyes. Sheer contempt. Like we were the worst sort of scum that ever crawled out of the ocean. What did they do? I love my wife, Rabbi Stone. She is my partner in everything. I regret nothing. Nothing that is except you. Huh. I hated you. For years I hated you. We both did. I joined another temple with a rabbi who was willing to marry us and tried to forget about you. We wouldn't marry them? So that's why they hate us, but... Okay, Rabbi, so why wouldn't we marry them? But when I found myself in trouble and in need of guidance, I could think of nowhere else to turn. You called me a traitor once. Do you still feel that way? I've seen traitors. I've seen Jews turn their backs on other Jews. It's not pretty. It's awful. I am not like them. Time has cooled my hatred. Has it done the same to you? I need to speak to you. I feel like I'm 12 years old again, preparing for my bar mitzvah and needing help with my Torah portion. I know I didn't marry a Jewish girl, or go to temple every week, or keep kosher, or do any of the many things we're supposed to do. But I always have known that I was Jewish. Isn't that enough? I'm not a traitor, Rabbi. I've never forgotten I'm Jewish. Jack Lauder. Okay, so he married a girl who's not Jewish. Is that like a really big deal in Judaism? If you're, if you're a Jew and you marry someone who's not Jew? I know some religions get very worked up about that kind of thing, and then others don't seem to care that much. So is that is that a thing that would normally be like a huge deal, and it would make sense for a rabbi to refuse to marry a Jew to a non-Jew? Hmm. That's kind of rough, though, that he reached out and tried to make amends at the end, but... He wasn't able to get to us. Well, let's check out the ledger. All right, recent transactions. Out, Joe DeMarco, $500, personal. There were a lot of personal checks written out to a Joe DeMarco. I wonder who he is. And we should look into it. Goldberg and Weaselbaum, $200. Looked like Jack hired an accounting firm. In Macy's. For goods received. That's right, she said they had the deal with Macy's. I recognize the name. Clothing store. Evidently, they bought products from Jack and paid for it properly. All cut and dry. There was nothing unusual here. Moda of Broadway. Goods received. Okay, so that must be another one they're supplying with clothing. I recognize the name. It was a clothing store. Same deal. Nothing unusual. Alright, another check to Joe DeMarco. And it looks like each message is going to be the same. Grace and Sportswear. Goods received. Okay. So, yep, another clothing store. We're good. Lose shipping. This payment went out to a shipping company. Nothing unusual about that. Well, unless it's the one that they're having all these issues with. Man, a lot of checks to Joe DeMarco. Okay, and I'm sure these are all the same, but just in case we're going to click through them. Alright, Moda again. Goldberg and Weaselbaum, his accounting company. And another to Joe. Yeah, there's a lot written out to Joe. Beth Tikva, $200 membership dues. Oh, yeah. Beth Tikva sounded like the name of a synagogue. Looks like Jack decided to stay devout after all. We should probably check out Beth Tikva and see what their rabbi has to say. If he can shed any light on anything. Okay. And we can combine clues. Excellent. So, Joe DeMarco, JDM. Well, well. Joe DeMarco, JDM. That had to be it. Klug. Wise, smart, or clever. Alright. Or maybe it's Klug. Um, 
So, Joe's meeting with Ethan. Jack Lott received an email from Ethan G, which described a meeting with a JDM. In Jack's ledger, there were several personal checks made out to a Joe DeMarco. It's reasonable to assume that JDM and Joe DeMarco are the same person. So, how do we get a hold of Ethan G? Yeah, we need to find out more about Ethan G. Can we combine that? Or maybe we should just go ask... Yeah. Let's go ask the wife about it. Mrs. Lauder. Oh, it's you. Come on in. Thank you. So, I need to know... Well, first, I would like to know about Joe DeMarco. Have you ever heard of the name Joe DeMarco? Joe? Yeah. Joe. Joe. Yes, I've heard of Joe. He was one of our first investors. He invested in Charming? Yes. Hmm. Why did you need an investor? Well, we didn't have much money to start the business with. All the banks saw us as a poor risk, so we needed independent investors. Have you ever met Joe? Jack handled the money stuff, although I know Jack didn't like him. Yeah. Why not? He didn't say, he just didn't like him. But we were desperate, so we had no choice. How did they meet each other? I think they were introduced. By Ethan? At the temple of all places. Oh. At temple? So Joe DeMarco is Jewish? Maybe. Why? DeMarco is not a very Jewish name. And that's important to you, is it? Not to me, no. But it's certainly significant. Hmm. So, okay, what about Ethan? Do you know if your husband did any business with a man named Ethan? Ethan. Ethan. The name sounds familiar, but I can't place it. I'm sorry. To be honest, I didn't really keep up with the business side of things. Is he involved? Maybe. What to say? Okay. You really think Joe DeMarco is Jewish? I told you, I have no idea. Do you know anything about Ethan G meeting up with Joe DeMarco? Ethan G? The name sounds very familiar, but I can't place it. I'm sorry. Okay, I think we're done here. I think really we need to go to Beth Tikva. I'm going to leave now. I'll see what else I can discover. Thanks, I guess. So hopefully... It's available on our map. Let's see. It's not. Well. Let's look it up on our computer, maybe. Or we can just look up Joe DeMarco, right? See if he's on uh, RavNet. Okay, so... it wrong. Joe D. Marco? Oh. Like that? No. Okay, um, Beth Tikva? Okay. And Amos Selig is our Chief Rabbi there. Is Zelig. All right, what do we got? Amos Selig moved to New York in 1963 with his wife Carol and his dog Dodger. Since then, he has been one of the most prolific rabbis in the city. His wife and dog are gone now, but Beth Tikva remains one of the strongest centers of the Jewish community. All right, and we can find him at the synagogue. So let's do any new mail. Now we looked at all of this. Okay. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, that's enough of that. Um, out we go. Let's see if we can go over to Beth Tikva now. Or Tikva. I don't know if I'm saying it right. Excellent. I love all this music, it's wonderful. 
A large, tasteful stained glass window surveyed the synagogue from its high vantage point. I suppose it's okay. Oh, come on now. It's very nice. Rabbi's podium? A tasteful podium of lacquered oak. It looked brand new and smelled of recent polish. Meh. I've seen better. <laughs> Synagogue envy. Okay, Torah. Services must have just ended, as they hadn't gotten around to putting the Torah away yet. I can't believe they're just leaving it here for anyone to come in and take it. They must have dozens of them in a back room somewhere. Cantor's Lectern? The Cantor's Lectern was an elegant affair made of from lacquered oak. It looked brand new. Meh. I've seen better. Okay, and let's look at the pictures. Several of the photos showed a group of children sitting around a table. Two men flanked the children, smiling at the camera like they just won the lottery. A caption read, J. Silver and E. Goldberg, E. Goldberg, on duty at the Beth Tikva Youth Center. Ethan G. E. Goldberg, uh-huh, uh-huh. Is that a note? Oh, come on, it's totally gonna be him. Yes? You're the chief rabbi here at Beth Tikva. I do carry that honor. So, what can I do for you, Mr... Uh... Rabbi, actually. Rabbi Stone. Well, <laughs> fancy that. I can always spare time for a fellow rabbi. Well, thank what you. What brings you to our humble synagogue? Well, rabbi to rabbi. Do you know Mr. Jack Lauder? Should I know Mr. Jack Lauder? <laughs> this is gonna be so much questions back and forth. Don't you think you should know Jack Lauder? Why do you think so? Wasn't he a member of your congregation? Was he? Don't you know your own congregation? Am I expected to know everybody? Well... <laughs> Amos broke out into an angelic smile. Are you finished? I guess. Wonderful. Alright. He was a member of your congregation. He died a few days ago. That's right. The funeral service was yesterday. I honestly don't know where my head is these days. You conducted the ceremony? Yes. His wife insisted on it. Did she now? If I may ask, what is your interest in Mr. Lauder? Well, he kind of hated me, but then decided to make amends at the very end, and... Aren't all matters of our flock our concern? Uh, well, not every matter. But still, we do what we can, don't we? <laughs> okay, um, well let's... tell me about Jack. Is there anything you can tell me about Mr. Lauder? I'm afraid not, Rabbi Stone. My congregation is rather large, Aww. and Mr. Lauder seldom attended services. I'm sure I don't need to tell you what that's like. You certainly don't. Alright. Um, can you tell me about Ethan Goldberg? Are you familiar with an Ethan G? Ethan G? Is that his name? Just an initial, as far as I know. Ah, well... Nothing leaps to mind, I'm afraid. Alright, how about Joe DeMarco? Does the name Joe DeMarco mean anything to you? DeMarco? DeMarco. Yes. Sounds Italian. Other than that, it means nothing. Sorry. Well, I was told he goes here. Did a Joe DeMarco ever belong to this temple? DeMarco. That's hardly a Jewish name. Yes, yeah, so it seems like it would Although, stand out. it's difficult to say. As I told you, it's difficult to keep track of individual congregation members. He was an investor in Jack Lauder's company. Does that mean anything to you? I don't know. Should it? No, I suppose not. Well, this isn't getting us much of anywhere. Do you know anything about Ethan G meeting up with Joe DeMarco? In all honesty, I have no idea who Joe DiMarco is, All right. so I'm afraid the answer is no. Okay, well, thanks anyhow. Good night to you, Rabbi Zelig. Good night to you, Rabbi Stone. Okay, E. Goldberg, though. Let's just try looking it up on Ravnet.
Oh. With a warm rush of triumph, I knew I found thy man. But accountant dead in Murray Hill shootout. That doesn't sound good at all. So. Ethan Goldberg of Beth Tikva was found dead last night in a Murray Hill alleyway outside Patty O'Hare's pub, the victim of an apparent mugging. So, Patty O'Hare sounds like somewhere to go. We at Ravnet express our sympathies to Ethan's friends and family. Now it's gotta be connected. Okay. I'm gonna need to look it up, aren't I? What was it? Patty O'Hare? hairs. <laughs> Welp reading. <laughs> One out of five. Ooh. Wow, I didn't think they still had dives like this in Manhattan. Do not use the bathroom, says Jamie. Alright, but it should be a place we can go to now, so. I'm actually going to go ahead and wind the episode down here. Please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this. Come back in. Next time we'll head over to Patio Hairs, see what we can learn. It's sounding now like... Maybe we've got actually two murders where he can help out with, because I'm pretty sure Ethan Goldberg dying is going to be connected.